the top 10 battery manufacturers in the world. Most of them are Chinese, but a few of them are not. A few of them are from a different country where, where they don't make lithium-ion phosphate batteries, so they're struggling to compete with the Chinese. None of these companies are from the West. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And I do this video every year. I have done so for the last four years the 10 biggest battery companies in the world. What are they? Well, here is a pretty qualified list. It comes straight from Automotive News. Chinese manufacturers have extended their dominance worldwide in the battery market. Um, whatever Trump's doing, whatever he thinks he's doing, it's certainly not helping in this segment anyway. This has consequences for American and European car manufacturers their share of value creation is declining. Think about it. Less engines are being made by the West, more batteries are being made by China and South Korea, and therefore the value creation is coming largely from China. The pace of building battery production capacity is incredibly high. With Chinese industry giants CATL and BYD continuing to lead the way, there are some problems in South Korea. In fact, there's some pretty big problems, and I'll get to what those are. According to a report by the South Korean market research firm, SNE Research, the production capacity of batteries for electric vehicles rose to 691.3 gigawatt hours. This is just for electric cars, yeah? Not for global battery consumption. That's different because that includes, that includes energy storage. Anyhow, in the first six months of this year, there was an increase in battery production for EVs of 32% compared to the same six months of last year. Capacity has thus increased almost sevenfold since 2018. Sevenfold. Now that might not sound like a lot, but actually it's an enormous increase. The market is dominated by CATL, by far the largest battery company in the world who has 36.8% market share, basically 37% market share. And that's um, that's not about to change. In fact, Cadle, CATL, they're about to increase their market share worldwide, probably pretty significantly. I think that by 2030, they'll increase their market share to 45, maybe even 50% worldwide. The Chinese government believes that this could be a problem they said that um, Cadle have a monopoly on battery sales. Who are some of Cadle's biggest customers? Tesla, Ford, and Volkswagen. But their new battery is going to be a big problem for other automakers in the industry. A big problem, particularly for South Korean companies. BYD have once again come in second place with 18.6% market share. Together, these battery giants account for 55% of the world's battery sales. Overall, Chinese producers achieved a global market share of around 76% in the first half of this year. Looking at the list here, you can see CATL in first, BYD in second. In third is LG Energy Solutions with 9.7%, around half of BYD's market share. Interestingly, only a few years ago, BYD had less market share than LG Energy Solutions. And LG, in fact, weren't far behind CATL at one point. It was a close race for first and second. When I first started this channel, basically it was those two and BYD was miles behind. That's clearly drastically changed. And if anything, it's only going to get worse for South Korean manufacturers. Next, we have CALB, a Chinese battery manufacturer. They make lithium-ion phosphate batteries and NMC batteries, but they're more known in China for their LFP batteries, which are used in XPENG's cars, amongst others as well. SK-ON is a South Korean battery company. They have 4.2% market share. They also make LFP and NMC batteries. Next is Panasonic from Japan. They are the only 
Japanese battery manufacturer in the top 10 in this list. They have 3.7% market share, about one-tenth that of CATL. Samsung SDI, they have 2.9% market share, obviously from South Korea. And EVE Energy, also a Chinese battery company, they have 2.9% market share. Finally, S-Volt, also a Chinese battery company, they have 2.5% market share. Now, as you can see on this pie chart, 11% is made up of other companies. So those 10 companies have 89.1% of the world's battery market share. But two of them have 55%. So it is it is a monopoly between BOAD and CATL. Now, could, could solid-state batteries change the division of this pie chart over the next five or 10 years? They could, but not to any meaningful degree. The reason... Solid-state batteries will certainly play a part in the automotive industry. And in 20 years' time from now, they could make up a large percentage of this chart. But that's not happening anytime soon. <laughs> in the distant future, yes. But within the next 5 to 10 years, probably not a significant percentage. To get to that point, companies will have to invest hundreds of billions of dollars, literally, to be able to produce solid-state batteries at competitive prices that consumers will be willing to pay. Now... Will consumers who buy Ferraris and high-end Porsches and Lamborghinis be willing to pay a lot for a solid-state battery? Yes, but that's not the average consumer. The average consumer would be probably, probably choose to buy either lithium-ion phosphate batteries or sodium-ion batteries. In fact, I'd say the reason that this is all going to get worse for all these companies except for CATL, who are going to take more market share, is because of CATL's new sodium-ion batteries, which have an energy density higher than that of BYD's blade battery, but cost about half the price and have some big advantages. They last for much, much longer than lithium ion phosphate batteries and that it's not even close. I'm talking more than three times the lifespan. If you can get a battery that lasts more than three times as long for half the price and has the same energy density and works much better in cold temperatures, in fact, works monumentally better in cold temperatures, then you can see why disruption of this entire pie chart will happen over the next five years. Companies are already using CATL's sodium ion batteries in numerous plug-in hybrids and e-revs that are already on the market in China. And the market share will clearly grow for sodium batteries over the next five years enormously. In fact, I would say that sodium batteries within the next 10 years will probably hold around 70% market share worldwide. That would be my approximate prediction with solid state maybe holding 10%. So what does this mean for other companies? Well, even lithium ion phosphate manufacturers in China are going to be in crisis if they cannot pivot and somehow invent amazing solid state battery, amazing sodium ion batteries, which CATL are already making today. It's even worse for South Korean battery manufacturers who only make NMC or NCM batteries, basically some version of a nickel cobalt manganese battery they don't make lithium ion phosphate batteries yet. They are in development. They are at the early stages of production of lithium ion phosphate, but nowhere near the kind of volume they need to be cost competitive, let alone being cost competitive with the new sodium ion batteries from CATL. So it's going to be very difficult for companies like Panasonic, companies like Samsung, LG Energy Solutions, and SKON to compete with Chinese manufacturers and particularly to compete with CATL. However, they do have an entry into the market in the United States or North America where it's very, very difficult to put to use Chinese batteries at a cost competitive price. You can do it, but there are political risks, there's other issues, tariffs, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So these battery manufacturers will be able to continue to sell EVs in North America where not that many EVs are actually sold, surprisingly. Yeah. You can see the challenges these companies are facing. Anyway, this does present an incredible opportunity for you guys who have watched this video. You basically, I can, I can, I can tell you now, I've done more videos on batteries over the last four years than any other person in the world. If you can find someone else who's done more than me, I'd be, well, I'd honestly be willing to eat my socks because I don't believe they that person exists. Does that mean I know more about batteries than anyone else? Absolutely not. But it certainly gives me a pretty good insight into what's happening in this industry.
Now, if you'd like, if you're a business or you're a personal investor and you'd like to consult with me on my expertise in this industry, you're certainly willing to, I'm certainly able to consult with you. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to my fees for consultancy purposes. Now, guys, I hope you got value from this video. If you have, please share it with someone who might also get value from the video. And also, if you can like and subscribe to the channel, like the video as well, that would be great. Thank you for watching.